Happy November, everybody, the month of the year where it's okay to say, no, I don't want to do anything except play video games because this is the month when all of the video games come out. And this is the video where I will tell you about as many of them as possible so that you can make informed decisions on what to play and or put on your holiday wish list. Here are November 2023's biggest game releases. Now, before we get into this, let me clarify that this video will not cover every single game that is releasing this month because there are flat out too many of them, but we will hit a lot of them. And if you'd like to keep track of everything coming out, I highly recommend checking out the IGN playlist app or just using it through IGN.com. I'll have more info on that later, but basically it's just a massive constantly updated database of games, new and old, that you can sort by various criteria and put into lists, sort of like Letterboxd or Goodreads, but for video games. Anyway, Friendly reminder, we also do our best to be comprehensive with what's coming out, when it's releasing, and which platforms it's coming to, but mistakes do happen. And even more often than that, we also get last minute delays and announcements after we've already produced this video. So apologies in advance if either of those things happen. We're all doing our best. And now, without further ado, the games. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. On November 1st, anyone nostalgic for the glory days of Newgrounds will be happy to hear that the classic Flash game Alien Hominid is not only getting an HD remaster, but it's also getting a brand new sequel with Alien Hominid Invasion. Those are both hitting PC, the Xboxes, and Nintendo Switch, and you won't even have to install a Flash plugin on the school library computers to play. You can go off the rails in Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventures Deluxe on all the consoles, which is a more casual spin on the beloved theme park management slash negligent carny simulator. Still on that day is Song of Nunu, a League of Legends story, which is a standalone single-player adventure set in that universe involving a boy and a yeti, and it's coming to Switch and PC. On November 2nd, Dead Island 2's house expansion drops for everything that that game's on, and this DLC will have you heading to some techno-billionaire's death cult compound in Malibu, which sounds like more fun for anybody who dug whacking zombos in the head with electric baseball bats in that base game. Also on the second is the farming and life sim My Time at Sandrock on PC, Switch, PS5, and Xbox Series. This was originally slated for release back in September, but the devs needed more time to sand off the rough edges, so let's hope it's finally ready to rock this month. Still that day, we've got Phantom Blade Executioners on PS4, PS5, and PC, a fast-paced 2D action RPG with a Vampire Hunter D delightful hand-drawn anime art style, not to be confused with Phantom Galaxies, a totally unrelated open-world space shooter with mechs, which is only on PC for now. There's also Played Up on all the consoles, which is an overcooked-like roguelite that has you serving customers while also designing and managing your restaurant on the fly, and it's published by Yogg's Cast Games, so fans of their content might find it especially charming. If you'd rather chill out while cleaning up instead of panicking while making a mess, the surprise hit Power Wash Simulator is coming to VR by way of Meta Quest 2 and 3, and despite the high PSI you're spraying water at, this game is refreshingly low pressure. If you'd rather clean up the streets of Detroit in a metaphorical sense, you can grab Robocop Rogue City on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. This will supposedly have you solving some mysteries and exploring a complex branching narrative. Shooting dudes in the dick and throwing dumpsters around as the titular cybernetic policeman from Paul Verhoeven's seminal and other bodily fluid infused 1987 classic. I wish I could say you can buy that for a dollar, but it's actually only 50 bucks, which is still cheaper than a lot of games these days, but hey, I'd buy that for a dollar. Somehow we're still only halfway through November 2nd, and it's a big day for games with two in the title. A few other notable sequels are Star Ocean, the second story R, the 2.5D remake of the beloved JRPG series second entry. That's on the PlayStations, the PC, and the Switch. The Smurfs 2, The Prisoner of the Greenstone, is definitely not the second Smurfs game ever made, but it's a sequel to 2021's Mission Vilief, and it's out that day for everything as well. If you want something a little more intellectually stimulating than helping those blue socialists evade Gargamel, the Talos Principle 2 is out that day for new gen and PC as well. The very cerebral first-person philosophical sci-fi puzzle game is somehow made by the same people behind the Dumb as Rock Serious Sam series, but it looks like it'll stimulate different parts of your brain. Finally, on the second is Thirsty Suitors, a narrative adventure from the studio that gave us Falcon Age. Between dating, cooking, skateboarding, and dance-offs, there's so much going on that it's kinda hard to summarize it, but it looks to be heavily influenced by both Scott Pilgrim and Southeast Asian culture. That's on everything. On November 3rd, 2023, DreamWorks All-Star Kart Racing gives the classic mascot racer treatment to Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and that guy who has taken three movies, five direct-to-video shorts, and a whole TV show to figure out how to train his dragon, and I still don't think he has it down. I specify November 3rd, 2023, because it sounds like a game that might have come out 12 years ago. That is on all the current platforms, and possibly Wii. Who knows? Wii. Clean in! Wii. A more serious racing game is out that day as well, EA Sports WRC, which as far as I can tell does not have Shrek in it, though I could be mistaken, and hey, a swamp could make for a really fun rally course. That's on the new consoles and PC.
Still in the third is a game that sounds like something I would make up as a joke on a podcast and spend way too long photoshopping box art for to post on Twitter only to get two retweets, but I assure you it is a real product. Ebenezer and the Invisible World is a 2D Metroidvania starring one of popular culture's most iconic and enduring Ebenezers. Eb Ebenezer Scrooge. This time around though, Scrooge is reimagined as a hero, and he's also a vaguely sexy anime man, and I don't know which of these concepts would have the ghost of Charles Dickens rattling its chains more angrily, but that's on everything. Wake me up when there's an open world Great Expectations RPG with Mrs. Havisham as a romance option. That sounds delightful. Still that day, you can load up Microsoft Flight Simulator on Xbox Series and PC and zip around Arrakis in an ornithopter in the new Dune DLC to kill some time until Chapter 2 finally hits theaters four months later than expected next March. Man, I want to see that movie. If you would like to embarrass yourself in a variety of different ways in rapid succession, great news because WarioWare Move It hits Nintendo Switch, and I am so excited for this stupid game. I have incredibly fond, blurry memories of playing WarioWare Smooth Moves on Wii in a cramped dorm room back in college, and I will be celebrating my 37th, I think, birthday by attempting to relive those glory days with this new installment and probably throwing my back out in the process because that's what you do when you're in your late 30s. My back! Oh, my back! On November 6th, people who like managing footballs have their work cut out for them because Football Manager 2024 comes to PC, Football Manager 2024 console comes to Xbox One, Xbox Series, PS4 and PS5, Football Manager 2024 mobile comes to mobile devices, and Football Manager 2024 Touch comes to Nintendo Switch, and I'm assuming they're calling it that because it has touchscreen controls, not because it's about touch football rather than tackle, but I could be mistaken. Still on the six is The Invincible, the hard sci-fi first-person adventure heavily borrowing from the works of Polish sci-fi author Stanislav Lem. He's the guy who wrote Solaris, which was adapted into a film by Andrzej Tarkovsky, who's the same guy who directed Stalker, which also inspired the shadow slash heart of Chernobyl games. So that's a bit of a walk, but if you like video games inspired by Eastern European genre fiction from that particular time period, maybe give this one a whirl. That's on new gen and PC. On November 7th, you apparently did so much power washing in VR that all those spiders living in your rain gutters and under your porch went inside the house and now you gotta go in there and kill them with fire, among other things, in Kill It With Fire VR. This game is definitely not realistic, but if you're an arachnophobe, it still might be enough to rustle your jimmies. I'm extremely spider averse and I threw on the non-VR version a while back and I only made it a few levels before I had to nope out and I will say a hard nope to the VR version because I don't need to be that squeamish. Anyway, if that sounds like a good time to you, clean the cobweb off that PSVR 2 and take it for a spin. Still in the 7th is the digital version of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. The physical release isn't until December 2nd, if that matters at all, but that is yet another Smash-like featuring your favorite Nicktoons like Rocco, Ren and Stimpy, the Angry Beavers, and a whole bunch of other more recent ones that I have no strong feelings about because I am old and tired. Wake me up when they add Stick Stickly as a playable character and make an entire stage based on face from Nick Jr. Burr, burr, burr. That's on everything. <laughs> Another old non-Nicktoon cartoon that I watched on Nickelodeon is getting a game that day as well. Tintin Reporter, Cigars of the Pharaohs, which I am unironically really excited about. This gamifies the classic Hergé comic in a cinematic third-person adventure with what looks like some platforming and flying and a bunch of puzzles. The preview we put up was really positive. That's on everything but Switch, and I'm super interested. On November 9th, it's a big day for people who like dragons because like a dragon, Gaiden, the man who erased his name, sees the return of Kazuma Kiryu, the former protagonist of the series formerly known as Yakuza, who faked his own death and disappeared forever at the end of Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, but who reappeared shortly thereafter in 2020's Yakuza Like a Dragon, and he's gonna be back in a starring role as one of the main protagonists in next year's Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. This game, however, is connecting the dots between all of that, and ultimately all that stuff I just said doesn't really matter because this is a game where you can kick a bunch of dudes asses using gadgets like rocket shoes and exploding cigarettes, which sounds like fun. That's on the Xboxes, the Playstations, and the PC. If you thought November 9th was a single Dragon Day, you are horribly mistaken because it is in fact a double Dragon Day, and in addition to kicking dudes' asses in Like a Dragon Guide N, you can do it the old-fashioned 2D way in Double Dragon Collection, which collects six of Bimmy and Jimmy's most notable outings, a few of which haven't gotten official ports in a very long time. That's on Switch, PC, PS4, and Xbox One. If you prefer Dungeons over Dragons, well, you're in luck too, because Dungeons 4 hits new gen and PC that day as well. Can you believe it? Dungeons and Dragons on the same day? This script practically writes itself. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm just kidding. It's actually a lot of work. On November 10th, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 comes to everything but Switch, and we heard a bunch of rumors that Activision would do the unthinkable and actually not release a new Call of Duty this year, and instead was gonna put out a major expansion to last year's Modern Warfare 2. Well, surprise, because that expansion expanded so much that it is now a full-fledged, full-price release, which will inevitably be one of the best-selling games of the year. 
In addition to being the release date of something famous for coming out every year, it's also the alleged release date for a game that's famous for not coming out? The day before, the massive post-apocalyptic survival game had a reveal that seemed too good to be true and quickly became the most wishlisted game on Steam. It was supposed to be out in June of last year and then the studio announced that they were switching engines and it was briefly delisted due to some trademark thing. And long story short, it's supposedly coming out this month for PC, the same day as Call of Duty. What could go wrong? On the 14th, Coral Island 1.0 drops. This is a Kickstarter darling that takes the old Harvest Moon farming sim formulator and gives it a nice tropical spin. I guess it is technically a cozy game, but cozy makes me think of sweaters and tea, and this seems more like a board shorts and umbrella drinks kind of game. Anyway, that's on PC and new gen. Speaking of sweaters and tea, any Hufflepuffs holding out hope for Hogwarts Legacy on Switch are in luck when the long-awaited port finally drops for Nintendo's little console that could and sometimes can. Seems like it probably took some advanced transfiguration to get a game of this scale running on that hardware. Then again, based on Mortal Kombat 11's Switch version, WB Interactive is even more eager to ship something that's fundamentally messed up than the Harry Potter erotic fanfiction community is, so maybe wait for the reviews on this one to make sure you're not getting a game where everyone's facial animations look like that Voldemort CGI in the first movie. You liar! Kill him! Fans of Invincible, the comic, or the show might have missed the news that there's a little game on the way. Invincible Presents Adam Eve is coming to PC on the 14th, and it gives Invincible's better half the Japanese dating sim treatment. It's not a big, huge, open-world action game, but it's something. Still on the 14th is Karma Zoo, which I spent 10 minutes Googling and I still couldn't quite figure it out. But from what I can tell, it's a multiplayer platformer where you can play as a variety of different animals with different abilities, and the idea is to use those abilities to assist and be assisted by a bunch of other rando players online. And there's also competitive multiplayer if you'd rather not play nice. So somewhere between Duck Game and Journey, I guess. I could be way off, but it sounds interesting. That's on PS5, Xbox Series, PC, and Switch, and it supports crossplay. On the 15th, we've got another interesting sounding indie with American Arcadia, which is a cinematic puzzle game that is part 2.5D platformer and part first person adventure. And it's about a guy named Trevor escaping from a reality show. So if your name is Trevor, or you think it sounds like a cool idea for a video game or both, you might enjoy this one. Sound off in the comments, Trevors. That's on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Also on the 15th is the PS5 and Xbox versions of Teardown, the hit PC game about tearing down, which looks like a very good time for blowing off some steam, and it's nice to see that it's finally on more platforms besides steam. Also that day, The Last Faith, a dark gothic Metroidvania Soulsborne, which is very clearly heavily leaning towards the Vania and Born ends of those genres. That's on everything. Oh, and how could I forget? November 15th is the release date for Sony's brand new portable device, the PlayStation Portal. If you haven't been keeping track of this, it's something of a monkey paw wish. It is a dedicated remote play device rather than a dedicated handheld. And instead of streaming games from the cloud, it connects directly to your PS5, assuming you have one of those, and pipes you gameplay from that. This means that it and your PS5 need a stable internet connection. It's probably a great solution if you wanna play a game while using your TV for something else, but there are a number of existing ways to do exactly that without dropping 200 bucks on a new device. You can pair your controller with a phone, tablet, or laptop and stream on that, or you can get a backbone to turn your phone into a little handheld for half the price of this, or you can even get a second TV for less than a backbone. The portal does feature the DualSense controller's bells and whistles though, so there's that, and sometimes it's fun to buy stupid little gizmos and gadgets. Speaking of which, the redesigned PlayStation 5 Slim is also supposed to hit stores sometime in November, but as of October 24th, when I'm shooting this video, there is no official word from Sony. The new one is 30% smaller, has a 12.5% larger hard drive, and the digital-only version costs 50 bucks more than the earlier diskless version cost at launch three years ago. As far as I can tell, this is the first time in PlayStation history that a console has gotten more expensive post-launch. Since the PS3 era, Slim models have been introduced at lower prices or the same prices as their larger launch counterparts, and usually, Three years into a PlayStation's life cycle, they start selling them for like a hundred bucks less than they cost at launch, but that is clearly not the case this time around. If everything I said made you want to go stab things, well, great news, because on the 16th, Assassin's Creed Nexus VR takes the historically and historical third-person assassination game and makes it a first-person virtual reality affair. You probably could have gleaned that from the title alone, but if you haven't been paying attention, apparently they pulled it off pretty well. Jumping from high places into haystacks in VR is one of those things that could be vomit-inducing or exhilarating or both, but I guess it's I guess it's pretty pretty cool. Anyway, I'm I'm curious to check that out. That is on Meta Quests 2 and 3. I keep hearing good things about the Lovecraftian fishing game Dredge, and if you're one of the people who's been saying those good things, you'll probably appreciate that it's already getting some DLC with the Pale Reach expansion, which is coming to all the platforms that Dredge is already on. At this point, the mention of the game Flashback might give you, well, flashbacks to the mid-90s and getting stuck on that cinematic puzzle platformer's early jungle levels. Well, great news, it's getting a brand new sequel creatively titled Flashback 2, despite it being technically the third game that's on everything digitally with physical versions coming next year. 
The Xboxes and Playstations get Jagged Alliance 3 that day as well. This is the long-awaited sequel to one of the hottest tactical RPGs of 1999, and thankfully it sounds like it was worth the wait, so I'm happy to hear it's coming to more platforms. Finally on the 16th, Johanne the Parhelion Blaze in the Deep Blue is a 2D Metroidvania rooted in the Love Live Sunshine anime series. That's on everything, and if we're being completely honest here, it made the list because I wanted to say the full title out loud. Johanne the Parhelion Blaze in the Deep Blue. That is up there with Artanelico Koga, the Nell of RCL, for what the f did I just say game titles. Speaking of blue stuff, on November 17th, Bluey the video game is coming to everything. This is the first game based on the hit kids show that a lot of parents are also very fond of, present company included, and this looks to incorporate some activities from the show, like Keepy Uppy and the Magic Xylophone, but it's also got a little campaign and lets you explore some familiar settings in co-op, which I'm totally gonna do with my daughter. If you don't have kids and don't understand the appeal of Bluey, it's basically like Peppa Pig, except it's Australian, not annoying, and it's about a kind, imaginative little dog whose parents still love each other, rather than a dead-eyed British piglet who regularly exhibits numerous dark triad personality traits. It's also genuinely funny for a little kid's show. There's an episode that's basically a courtroom procedural putting the dad on trial for farting one of the kid's faces. <laughs> There's another where the kids pretend that they're whale watchers and their mom is the whale because she's hung over from New Year's Eve and just wants to lie on the couch and eat corn chips, and really, who doesn't? Anyway, Bluey's great, so fingers crossed this game isn't shovelware. Anyway, sorry for going all dad there. If you're a cool, hip, fun young person who watches cartoons and has casual sex, you're probably more interested in Naruto x Baruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections, which will revisit a bunch of iconic battles from the anime, as well as telling an original story, and it's got a roster of 130 playable characters, which is utterly bananas. That's on everything. And the title kind of makes me think it's an ad for a dating service. Sign up now for some Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections today. There are 130 single ninjas in your area looking to chat. Most of them are hiding in plain sight. Anyway, I don't think it'll have any dating, but Persona 5 Tactica will send your favorite waifus and husbandos into an alternate dimension where they will squat up with the local freedom fighters to overthrow the oppressive regime that is controlling this strange realm. And weirdly, it takes place concurrently with the events of Persona 5, which it's, it's kind of odd that revolutionary work never came up in conversation, but hey, everyone's got a lot going on in Persona 5. That's on Switch. Also on Switch is Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, the top to bottom modern overhaul of the beloved 1996 Squaresoft RPG. This game looked amazing on Super NES back in the day, and it probably didn't need a full modern overhaul, but absolutely nobody is complaining that it's getting one. Still on the 17th, you can do some slicing and dicing in VR with Tiger Blade, which is on PSVR 2, and you can do some strategic clicking on stuff in Warhammer Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin, which is on new gen and PC. Worldless, a trippy minimalist platformer we told you about last month, got hit with a delay, but it'll come to everything on the 21st. On November 28th, Last Train Home hits PC. This is an on-rails approach to real-time strategy, quite literally, as you've got to get a train full of soldiers safely through a war zone, and outside of combat, you can expect a fair amount of management and keeping tabs on the well-being of your troops. It seems a little like FTL, but considerably slower than the speed of light. Also, it is supposedly based on real events, showing what the Czechoslovak Legion went through in the wake of the Great War while traveling through Siberia, so definitely not a cozy game, but it sounds like it might pair well with bleak winter weather and seasonal depression. On November 29th, there's the first person mystery Forest Grove, which is on everything but Switch, and a day later, Asterix and Obelix slap them all too. Last month, we told you about Asterix and Obelix Heroes, which is a deck battler. We showed gameplay from Slap Them All, and this week, I promise you we are showing the right gameplay. That is on PS4, PS5, Series X, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Last month, we told you the Robin Hood infused multiplayer game Gangs of Sherwood was coming out for PS5, Xbox Series, and PC, and it sure would have, but it got delayed twice since then, and now it's coming out November 30th, assuming they don't kick it down the road yet again. And there you have it. That is a breakdown of a lot of the games that are coming out this month, but like I said, we skipped some. If there's something that we omitted from this list, I promise you there's nothing conspiratorial or nefarious about it being on the list or not being on the list. We just picked the ones that we thought looked the coolest. We probably forgot some. If we forgot something really cool, shout it out in the comments. It, but don't just be like, you forgot this thing, I, I hate you. Just tell us why it's cool. Like, you you hype it up. Tell us what it's what, what, what it's about. What is this game? Why, why, why should we play it? Or, sh or should we not play it? Meanwhile, if you're the sort of person who likes keeping track of what's worth playing, what you want to play, what you have played, and so on, please give IGN Playlist a shot. We have a massive, constantly growing database of games, and you will find a complete list of what's coming out soon, plus tons of lists of recommendations from the IGN staff and the community. You can keep track of your wish list, 
what you've played, or just make lists based on bizarre criteria, like games with weaponized bodily fluids. That's that's one that I made. And it's also integrated with how long to beat, so you can actually figure out how long it'll take you to get through your massive backlog of games that you say you're gonna play, but keep forgetting to play. Hop over to playlist.ign.com. You can use the service through a browser, or you can get a dedicated mobile app. It is totally free to sign up for, and nobody asked me to plug it in this video. It just seems like something that would be of use to our audience who watches these videos, especially the cool people who hang out to the very end when I sound all raspy, like I've been smoking cigarettes out behind the bleachers. I swear I'm just dehydrated. And on that note, holy hell, we did it. Those were the biggest games in the biggest game release month of what's easily the biggest game release year of my career, possibly ever. I'll be back next month with the last one of these videos of 2023 unless they make me do 2024's biggest upcoming games which they probably will anyway there's an avatar game out next month so on that note i see you uh next month